Let's go talk a little bit about some PowerPoint action in Camtasia. And specifically, I'm going to talk about importing PowerPoint stuff into Camtasia and give you a few top tips and tricks and stuff. So for those of you who aren't aware, in Camtasia, if we go to Help and About, as of version 9.1, Camtasia 9 now supports the PowerPoint file format. Okay, so what does that mean? It basically means that I can go to my clip bin, okay, and I can go find me a PowerPoint file, and I can drag it and drop it right into Camtasia, okay? So a couple of important notes on that. What it does is if I hover over this, you'll see that it is a PNG file. All Camtasia does is it takes whatever slide deck you have and it exports each of these slides as a PNG file. You could actually do the same thing just by going to File, Save As, Browse, and then save all of these as PNG images and then import them into Camtasia. Okay, there's no difference in doing that. It's just kind of handy dandy to be able to grab slides and jam them right into Camtasia. Let's go ahead and find that file again. We'll let it do its thing. You can also drop it right on the timeline if you want. And what it does is it goes ahead and looks at each of the slides, grabs it, and then puts them in order on the timeline. Again, just a handy kind of a thing where we don't have to do the export and import and blah, all that good stuff. Okay, so that's um, one of the features that is available in Camtasia now. Here's kind of your caveats. If you have slides that have any, and I mean any, animations, transitions, bullet builds, anything like that, all of that is for naught. When you import them, you're going to get a static image, and that is it. No animations, no nothing. Okay, and by itself, that may or may not be a big deal, depending upon how you design your slides. So this slide deck is kind of an example of how I might create PowerPoint content if I'm just going to jam it right into Camtasia as static images. You notice this is a big bold image. There's not a lot of stuff going on. And as we kind of flip through here, the content kind of speaks for itself visually. So yeah, I may narrate some stuff here, but this is the main talking point, And I don't need a lot of animations and stuff. You know, it goes from one to the other to the other, and you can really kind of get a visual idea of what's being talked about just by the slide, right? So in a case where I'm going to use this import feature with PowerPoint, I'm probably going to want to build slides that are not dependent, I guess is my main point, not dependent at all upon any kinds of weird you know, animations and stuff like that. Just a good, solid, visual story, right? So that's kind of the scoop there. Once I get them into Camtasia, of course, and they're all on the timeline, you can, if you want, m maybe use some transitions between slides. So you can add a few effects. I could do a transition and just simply fade from one to the other or use any of the transitions, really. That's probably the, the basic take on it for that kind of thing. You could also add a behavior to it. So let's try that. Let's go to behaviors and maybe just like a, maybe a pop-up behavior. So effects and stuff like that that you can add will still work because it's just an image, right? So you can do some, some animation stuff if you want. Let's say that I don't really have a good visual presentation, but I have a slide deck that I really kind of like. And this is a template 
uh, by and large, this will kind of come into play with stuff like templates that you get. And this is one that I got from Presenter Media. If you folks aren't hip to Presenter Media, this is a great place to get all kinds of stuff, especially things related to PowerPoint. I've been using, well, let's see, I just renewed my subscription for the 10th time. I've been using this for 10 years. If you're not hip to Presenter Media, I'll go ahead and put a link in the chat box for that. Okay, so I found this one on Presenter Media, and I like it. Okay, so here's what the template looks like, and you'll notice that it has all kinds of animations, <laughs> right? I'm really kind of not going to be able to use those, but I love the design. Now, I could just kick stuff out, you know, modify text and all that good stuff and kick them out as static images, but in a case where I might want to maybe make a few modifications and things like that and retain the animation, here's one way that I kind of like to do it. Here I have gotten rid of a bunch of the superfluous text boxes and stuff like that. I've pared it down so that it, it's nice and clean. Okay, so I've made, made some changes here uh, and it still has the animations. Right? I like this. <laughs> and of course I could change background colors and all the cool stuff that you can do in PowerPoint. Right, So there are a few different ways to get this animation out of PowerPoint. But what I want to mainly do when I'm creating a, a video like this is I probably will have narration to it. You notice this is like a presentation, right? So what I'm going to do in this particular example is I'm going to show you how to kick this out real quick with the animations and then we're going to sync it up now, we've used and taught various methods of doing this. You can go into record slideshow, you know, and stuff like that. This is kind of an, a new way that I'm, I'm doing it that I, I like even better. So here's kind of the scoop. And I'm going to start in Camtasia. These kinds of presentations will usually have an audio track, right? So that's what I have here. I have recorded the narration for my presentation. And you can do this in Audacity, you can do it right in Camtasia if you want. If you go to the More tab here, you can go to Voice Narration and just start recording your voice, right? I like to do it in Audacity. I'll have a script usually, but whatever method you use, if you use a script or you just start talking, at the end of the day, I'm going to end up with my audio narration. And at that point, what I'll do is I'll clean it up, remove any mistakes by, you know, highlighting and cutting or whatever I need to do so that I get a good, clean audio track. Okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to listen. I'm going to listen and wherever I make a slide change, I'm going to drop a marker. So this is marker one is where the next slide needs to come in. Marker two, change slides. Or there's an animation that happens. In other words, something needs to appear on the screen that is different than what existed previously. That can be a slide change, it can be a bullet coming in, that kind of thing. Right? So I listen to the audio and everywhere something you know, needs to change. In other words, where I would normally click in PowerPoint, I'm going to drop a marker. The important thing to note here is I'm going to drop the marker on the audio track itself. So if you notice, if you take your cursor here and move it into the gray area, you get the little plus button, the little plus symbol to drop a marker. This is called a marker on the media. A lot of you may be familiar with adding a marker to the timeline. So I'm just going to insert a marker here. And the distinction and the reason it's important to drop them on the media itself is because this marker is married to this point in my audio file. 
watch what happens to my timeline marker if I move this track. See that? Well, now my marker's all hosed up. It's not where I wanted it to be. But look at all these little markers. They march along with the audio. That's uh, kind of an important step. Create your audio of your narration. Uh, I usually use a script if it's going to be like an important type of a thing. So now in PowerPoint, what I'm going to do is I've created and modified all my slides and stuff like that. Right? I'm going to go to File, Export, Create Video. And what I'll generally do here is I'm going to put a pretty good amount of time spent on each slide. I want at least as much time as it takes for all the bullets to build or animations to happen, that kind of thing. But I don't care about any clicks or anything like that. You'll see why in a second. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to go ahead and create video. And you want to create usually a Windows Media video. There's some glitches in MP4 coming out of PowerPoint, especially if there are animations and stuff. Right, so let's go back to here and I've kicked out a video file. Let's go to Camtasia and let's drop this guy on the timeline. Let's see, I might have to resize just a little bit so we'll kind of scooch this make her fit. There we go. Let's let's let it roll. I'm going to mute my audio track so it's not blaring in my ear. Animation. Awesome animation. I like it. I like your thinking. Then the next animation's going to come in yada 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 point 1 point 2, right? So, here's kind of the secret sauce. None of that <laughs> lines up with what I wanted to have happen for my narration, does it? Okay, so here's my opening. I'll just kind of walk through here. Here's my opening. Oops. And here is where I want to start talking about the next thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to back my playhead up to just before, and I might even zoom in a little bit more, there we go, just before, see it moves. Okay, so let's lock this track, and here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hold my shift key, and I'm going to grab the playhead, and I'm going to move it this way to my first marker. Then, what I want to do to extend this is I want to hold my Alt key and I want to extend this frame. There we go. So what that does is it, it takes the last frame from where I split it and it extends it. And now watch what happens. Boom! It changes. So now I can go ahead and just walk on down the timeline Let's see what we got going on. Okay, so there's point one, right? And then right here, I want my next point to happen, my next animation to happen. So what I need to do is I'll go ahead and keep moving the playhead, and there's my animation coming in. That's what needs to be coming in on the screen at my next marker, but in this case, you notice that you know, it doesn't come in soon enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, double click on the marker so I'm at the right point and then I'm going to make a selection until just before, right, just before my animation happens. Make sure your audio track is locked and I'm going to cut now watch what happens. At marker 1 here, this needs to come in. Let's see if it works. Boom! Okay, oh, and then it comes in too soon. 
Uh, let's zoom out a little bit. I'll do one more example. Kind of scooch down the timeline. My next point is right here. Okay. But it comes in too soon. Boom, right there. So I'm going to move my playhead back to where I want it to stay. Split that track. Scooch this down. Boom, snap it to the marker. Click here. Hold the Alt key. Extend that frame. Bam. So the slide should change here at, at marker 2, right? Perfect. So that's basically how you can kind of work with this. Uh, you know what, I'm going to do one more. So there's the first point I'm talking about. Okay, here's my next point right here. Comes in too fast, right? That's too fast. So right here, I'll click on the clip, split. Put this down where it's supposed to be. Click on the clip, Alt key, extend. And what's going to happen here at this marker? The next bullet's going to come in, right? Boom. Perfect. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. It's really kind of the easiest, most no muss, no fuss way to do it, but you just got to pay attention to stuff. Because uh, here, uh, here comes my next bullet, too soon, click, split, shift this down to my next marker, click, Alt key, extend. So at the end of the day, what happens is I get all the yummy goodness of the animation synchronized perfectly to my narration. Does that make sense? <laughs> it's really just a good way to be able to quickly, I guess is the key, with the least amount of hassle, get something perfectly aligned and just cranked out. You see how long it took me to do that, right? It, it takes like no time at all to line stuff up. You're either cutting something out or extending something to make it last to the point in time but the, the handy part is you got to put those markers in, and then you'll be able to just snap stuff, click right to where it needs to be. Okay. Now, like I mentioned, you can go in and you can do all kinds of, you know, other stuff, record slideshow, and it will save all my clicks and narration. And there's nothing wrong with that strategy, right? But what I find is that that is prone to what? Mistakes, isn't it? So if I go into slideshow mode, just like I'm standing on stage and I record my narration as I'm clicking through, it'll record it all and I can then save as video and it will save out my presentation session. But if I make a mistake, then, well, then I got to try to deal with it later. This way, I get my audio right, I mark it up, I kick the animations out just with a simple save video, and everything just freaking works. <laughs> That's kind of the way I do that, right? So. so if you want to just export slides and stuff and drag and drop the PowerPoint file into Camtasia, uh, like I mentioned, you're not going to get any animations or anything like that. But here's a little trick you can do, and that is to f fake it out. So here I have, you know, a template, and I like it. I like the way it looks and all that good stuff. And maybe I do want bullet points to come in. Well, let's make this a bunch bigger. And let's make uh, the bullet bigger. The thing that you can do is instead of putting multiple bullets on one slide, which will not animate, you can kind of fake it out. So let's do this. Let me get this slide the way I want it, 
the bullets look the way they I want them to look. And maybe I even insert an image in here, right? Something like that. But I want uh, multiple bullets and not all of them on the screen at the same time. So what I would do in a case like that is I'll create my first bullet. Now I'm going to right click, duplicate, and on the second slide I'm going to add my next bullet. Right? And uh, my next slide I'll right click, duplicate, and I will add my third bullet, bullet three. So now instead, if you think about it, what I have is three static images. And let's go into slideshow mode real quick. So I got this. Oh, bullet two came in. Bullet three came in. In reality, it's just three separate static images. And if we pull that into Camtasia, drop it on the timeline, I'm going to have my three bullet points. I'll let this roll. For that is bullet one, bullet two. Okay, and again, I can drop a transition or something in there. And, you know, kind of the handy part about this is that these are just static images. So I can, you know, make each one last as long as I want. And again, maybe use the process to line things up with my markers. By the way, if you're working with multiple elements on the timeline, let's say I want to scooch all of these down. Well, if you, if you click on this first one here, the first of these three that I want to move down, you can't. <laughs> you can't drag it. So there's a couple ways you could do it. You could select all of them. Now I can move it, right? Or, here's a little trick, you can click on the first one, hold down your shift key, and now watch, everything will move. So I can line up, well, let's do it this way, hold my shift key, line it up, extend the, and here you don't have to extend the frame because it's just a static image, right? You only have to extend frames if you're working with a video clip. So let's put this one, that one goes, extender out, and bam. You kind of got her, kind of got her whipped right there. But that's how you might take a slide deck that you have that um, you build yourself. And you kind of want to use the import trick. And you don't want to go through uh, a lot of hassle, but you can't, or you have to remember, you can't do slide builds or, or build bullets or transitions or anything like that. So the way you fake it out is you just make static images of each thing you want to appear on the screen in the order in which you want them to appear. Right. So uh, hopefully that was some pretty good stuff.